This episode of the Soupcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasonings such as the savory Kerry steak, the oak, the Mad Hatter, and much, much more. Can't go wrong with any of these seasonings at themadcanadianbbq.com. That is themadcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to use the promo code for this month only, one year two zero. That is one spelled out, O-N-E-Y-E-A-R-2-0 at checkout for 20% off the entire month of October. Uh, be sure to check out all the great seasonings at themadcanadianbbq.com. And for any any updates from the Mad Canadian where he's going to be this next weekend, be sure to check out all his social media, his own Twitter or on Facebook to find out where he's heading this weekend. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. What's up, YouTube? Wasn't Saturday great? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be great when Big Ten teams are playing. Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, it's... Uh... It just is what it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know. On Sunday we drink coffees. Or, thing with caffeine. Or, or, or should I say Monday? Because when <laughs> everyone watches this. <laughs> Friday we drink beers. Mondays we drink coffees. Alright, let's rejoin our audio listeners. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you, Jared? I'm doing all right. No complaints. No complaints. No complaints. We had some. We had some football this weekend, and uh, Team, Team Chaos 2.0. Uh, I mean, it's. I don't know if it's quite as as Team Chaos E as last weekend was, but it's it's dang close. And I think really the only reason that might be is because less teams are qualifying for the right to have Team Chaos plopped. <laughs> Some teams are just losing now. You know what I mean? It's just like, I, you know, did I drop a, D, a, a Team Chaos alert for Florida? Yeah, I dropped a Team Chaos alert for Florida. Did I bother to drop one for LSU this time? No. They're, they're done. Well, to, to a degree, that is. I mean, it's Missouri. No, it, it's because LSU doesn't deserve it anymore. <laughs> okay. All right. More on that here in a little bit. Jared. Yeah. As we are releasing this episode, 12 days, 12 days, Cardale Jones number days until kickoff. Yeah. As we're releasing this, it's 13 for us, which is bad luck. So let's focus on the 12. That's why I said 12. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Jared. <laughs> All right, uh, we're getting really, really close here. Uh, speaking of numbers here, Jared. Yeah. Uh, Coach Day over the weekend announced the the number zero, or excuse me, he calls it the block O number, which is very yeah. fitting. Uh, he comes out and talks about a little bit about the history that will be block O, uh, about what it means and and who it's honored by and we'll go on that here in a moment here yeah. <laughs> uh, but after his own spiel about what it's about and uh who's Toughness, going to be accountability uh, who, and fight yes and who it's going to um who, who's going to be able to have the number moving forward but this year for the very first time wearing block o is john cooper yeah, um, of course, when you say John Cooper, it sounds like this is why we've really focused on the Jonathan Cooper over the past yes. uh, 73 <laughs> years that he's been at Ohio State. Seems like we've had quite a few players who seem to be like that. Yeah. Like um, JT Barrett and uh, Aaron and Kraft. Kraft. Yeah, <laughs> our, 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 uh, our 10 year, not 10 yard, our 10 year players. Yes. 
That's that's a little bit of wordplay for you. The but yeah, it's 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 cool. Uh, and by the way, this doesn't have to be his last year at Ohio State. He can come back. No one's using eligibility this year. Mm-hmm. Now I I hope he kicks some ass and heads to the NFL draft instead. Uh, that's yeah. uh, that's my hope for him. Um, he's been. We love to have him, but I'm sure he wants to move on. And if he has the type of year that we are wanting and expecting from him, he, he should be able to move on to the NFL draft after this. Before we go any further, look at this. So we're looking at a picture that was um, posted from the Ohio State football social media here. Yeah. Look at Jonathan Cooper's jersey there. Not not the not the block O okay. jersey. The one that he's wearing right now the 18 uh-huh. you see something unique in there uh it's I, I i would describe it on the picture as like a watermark inside the numbers mm-hmm. what's do, do you have details on that yeah no that's the first time i've ever seen that i was really trying it's, to point that out oh it's just it's their practice jerseys okay that's all i that's right. not something we're not gonna hinting see to something else or? i don't believe so <laughs> i think that's just their practice jerseys so I'm going to talk a little bit about this Blocko. Um, they are uh, now Bill Willis wore 99, but 99 is retired in honor of Bill Willis. Uh, but they are using the Block O to honor Bill Willis. Now I want to talk for a second about Bill Willis, just because I don't feel like enough people know who Bill Willis is. So forgive me for a moment. We're going to do a bit of a history lesson. Because I really feel like it is necessary. Uh, Bill Willis, defensive lineman. Uh, he played eight years of professional football split across the uh, All-American Football Conference and the NFL. Uh, all of that was with the Browns. Uh, but the Browns, if you don't know, didn't start their life in the NFL. They started in the AAFC. If Again, if that's not a thing you're aware of. Um, Willis was one of the most dominant defensive linemen of his era, which is the 1940s and 50s. Uh, and he was named all pro in every season of his career. And he reached the NFL pro bowl for three of the four years that he was technically in the NFL as opposed to the AAFC. Now I want to focus on this next part, uh, because I don't know why Bill Willis's name isn't in people's vocabulary the way that Jackie Robinson's name is in people's vocabulary. Uh, I don't know if that's the NFL's fault or, you know, because MLB has always done a really great job of sort of standing up Jackie Robinson. And maybe the NFL needs to do a better job of standing up Bill Willis. Um but it's it's worth pointing. Of course, it's also partially because he broke the color barrier, not in the NFL, but in the AAFC, which I guess maybe complicates things from a narrative standpoint. Uh, but Willis is one of the first two uh, African American players to play professional football. Um, when he signed with the Browns, along with uh, Marion Motley. And this took place years, or excuse me, months. It took place months before Major League Baseball. Also complicating this narrative is the fact that the Browns signed two African-American football players, which, again, complicates the, it complicates the narrative. I'll, I'll just, I guess I'll just keep saying that. You can sort of, in baseball, you can sort of just stand up Jackie Robinson as like the one guy, um, which in retrospect probably put a lot... Uh, a lot of undue and unnecessary uh, pressure on Jackie Robinson to sort of make him the singular face of all of that. And thank God Jackie Robinson was who he was and he handled that as well as he did. Uh, But in retrospect, maybe the Browns did it better by not taking all of that focus and putting it on one person. Um, now, again, if this is not obvious to anyone, he played for Ohio State. Both, uh, he played for Ohio State under Jim Brown for the brief stint that Jim Brown was the coach at Ohio State and then followed Jim Brown eventually to the NFL. Um, 
Uh, let's see. He was uh, part of the Buckeye football team that won the very first national championship for Ohio State in 1942. Graduates. By the way, I said Jim Brown before. It's Paul Brown. I just, I, I don't know what that was, but I've corrected it. Thinking of the Browns too much. Yeah. It's a lot of, a lot of Browns, a lot of Browns. Jim mm-hmm. Browns, Paul Browns, a lot of Browns, all of them in Cleveland. Uh, after graduating in 1944, um, yeah, he basically went and tried out for the Browns because he had heard that Paul Brown was running the team. And it's like, I know that guy. <laughs> So he goes up to Cleveland, tries out, makes the team. Like I said, and was an instant star and just dominated the league. Um, He was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1971. Um, In 1977, he was one of the charter members, one of the very first a uh, group of Ohio State athletes inducted into the Ohio State Hall of Fame. Um, and in that same year was elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. In 2007, which uh, I believe was the year that Bill Willis died. Um, th- uh, I'm not sure if that was pre or post his death. It would have been nice if it was pre, so he could have witnessed it, but I'm not exactly sure how that timeline played out. Um, but Ohio State retired the number 99 and, and hung it up in Ohio Stadium. Uh, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of numbers retired at Ohio State. There's not a lot of names hung up in the proverbial rafters of Ohio State. Um, and I believe, oh man, I, I really wish I could say this with confidence. Every single one of those players got there by winning the Heisman Trophy with the exception of Bill Willis. I think that is accurate. Uh, Willis was named as a finalist for the NFL 100 of all time. Uh, An amazing career, um, and I I just don't feel like we talked about Bill Willis enough and the progressive nature at Ohio State and of the Cleveland Browns. Mm -hmm. Um, I just want to point out because I feel like it's necessary that Ohio State never had a color barrier. Um, he, Like I said, he became an Ohio State football player in the 1940s, and that's Ohio State had had African-American football players for like 40 or 50 years at that time. Um, but this is still like two or three decades ahead of where some Southern schools, I think... Uh, We'll maybe point out Georgia and Clemson, among others, uh, decades before those teams would allow African-American football players on their football teams. So I just I want to point out that sometimes it's good when your university is on the correct side of history. Yeah. And how how often can you say or how how often can you really point at names of or players where they have their names postered where they went to college and at a professional football stadium. Too. Yeah. You no, know, I almost missed that. Thank you so much, Kyle. Um, not me- There's not many at all. I, Bill I'm Willis sure there's is, probably a good handful of teams and Bill Willis is one of those. Yeah. Bill Willis's number is also retired for the Cleveland oh, Browns. I wonder if the Titans have Eddie. I don't know. I think maybe. Hmm. I think the Titans have McNair and Eddie retired, 9 and 27. Um, I'll I'll go ahead and go out on a limb and say that the Ravens did not retire Troy Smith. Yeah. (laughs) Well, they kind of retired Troy Smith, but they didn't retire his number. So Tennessee retired both Eddie George and McNair's numbers. Yeah. I think they did that as a joint ceremony because yep. otherwise it's, you know, if anyone, Steve McNair had tragically passed away, um, it's a little too sad maybe to do that, <laughs> you know, as a singular event. Mm-hmm. 
All right, Kyle. Um, I think that's it for our history lesson. But you talked a little bit about the Titans. And I, I feel before we get talking uh, about sort of the football games that happened this weekend, um, we do need to talk a little COVID, which no one's happy about. We're not happy about it. You're not happy about it. But it's it's a thing that has to be discussed for a moment. Um, we've talked a lot about, well, what if this team has this many games and in the Big Ten only has this many games and the Pac-12 only has this many games? Well, just because those games are scheduled doesn't mean those games will be played. Um, the Titans have sort of made a mess of the NFL. <laughs> I think we can go ahead and say that. I believe the NFL is looking to fine the Titans a fair amount of money uh, for not following protocols. Uh, there's a there's a big issue in the NFL right now, and it does appear that the, uh, the Titans, speaking of the Titans, are... Uh, at least partially responsible for this issue. Um, so when you see all of the stuff and you see all of these big 10 restrictions and you maybe don't feel great about them. Oh, if you have this many positive tests, if you have that many positive tests and you have all of these things, uh, with your rapid testing and your protocols and your rules and your restrictions and all of that. And a lot of people may have uh, reacted negatively to that. A lot of that is in place to prevent what is happening in the mm -hmm. NFL and uh, the big 12 apparently is uh, having a lot of issues. I know with Baylor um, Houston, despite having a bunch of the games scheduled, just got their first game in this Friday or last Friday rather um, some sections of the country are taking this more seriously than other sections of the country. Um, mm -hmm. So it, well, it, I just saw just now and it's official now that the, the professional level that the Patriots and Broncos game Monday is now being postponed to next week. And there you go. Um, it, I know that there's a section of our listener base potentially who might think that all of this is fictional. No, nah, not fictional. That's that's too far. Um, overblown, overhyped, over whatever. Um, and, and I'm not going to try and convince you otherwise. The fact of the matter, however, is that the NFL and at least the Big Ten um, are not treating this like it's a not a big deal it they, they are in fact treating it like it's a big deal so if you if you don't believe that that's fine but we're, we're reporting about what the nfl is doing and what college football is doing and the nfl is taking it seriously and the big 10 at least mm -hmm. is taking it seriously um i mean heck i mean heck if the columbus crew team yeah aren't playing sunday either yeah um and I don't have all of the details on that, but I think like two staff members at the Columbus mm -hmm. crew tested positive. Yeah. So it's not just, it's not just outside of Ohio area or whatever. It's, it's happening right in, right in the city of Columbus too. Well, I no, I, I think you misunderstand because Ohio's had some really bad numbers recently. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that. Okay. Um, what I'm saying is that the big 10 is going to take this as, serious and take precaution mm -hmm. i mean the, which is what the crew is doing um les miles tested positive and they're talking like he's going to be on the field next week you know what i mean that that's what i mean i'm talking i'm not talking about getting it versus not getting it anyone can get it through bad circumstance i'm talking about how you react when people get it and that that that's my point um and that all of the protocols that the Big Ten has put into place should help to prevent massive spreads. And, you know, the difference being that two staff members for the Columbus crew get it and they kind of go into shutdown mode versus, you know, the Tennessee Titans where a couple staff members got it. They 
don't have the protocols and the procedures in place and now their entire front office practically have it yeah they said they say now that tennessee has 24 positive cases since september 24th so that's more than one a day right now <laughs> yeah point is is that some organizations are taking this more seriously than other organizations. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think, and I think we just have to be mentally prepared. Yeah. That there might be some games that get moved or ultimately canceled, canceled. too. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no, because of, so I'm talking about how the big 10 is managing things well with all of their procedures and testing and da, 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 where they messed up. <laughs> and by the way, fire Kevin Warren, just going to throw that out there. It's been too long since they've said it. Yeah, I mean, their they, they original have, they schedule have... was set up to have yeah. games postponed and moved and shifted mm -hmm. around. Yep, had they and they had since February to put all of these things into all the the procedures and everything to put into place. All of this could have been done, but they basically waited to the last second, hoping for a miracle vaccine or something that would come and fix all of their issues. I feel like it's one of those things where it's on your to-do list and all of a sudden you get a reminder, hey, this is due in seven days. They're like, oh, oh crap, God. we forgot to do this. I, that's that's too accurate. <laughs> I feel like that's how this went down in... And Kevin Warren's uh, team. Yeah. And, and, and instead of trying to pull some all-nighters and get it done, he just decided to take the zero. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, that, that's it. That's all the COVID I feel like talking about. That's actually a lot more COVID than I felt like talking about. Well, if you're, if you're worried about going out and... Uh, worry about being around others, but still want to get some great food. Yeah. Oh, uh. you can, you can get yourself some mad Canadian seasoning to spice up your, your home cooked meals. Yeah. Mad, uh, mad Canadian's got you covered with all sorts of seasonings. What you got over there, Jerry? I got a bunch. You, you, you direct me, you direct me. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's do the coffee and Q. I know one of your, uh, your favorites, the coffee and Q. They're all one of my favorites, Kyle. <laughs> They're all your favorites. <laughs> the coffee and Q. Uh, let's see. Chili powder, maple sugar, paprika, ground coffee, and additional spices. The magic's right. in the additional spices, Kyle. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Actual coffee, uh, actual caffeine. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Uh, next one here is the smoked. I think I have a smoked. I do have a smoked. Getting nice. low on my smoked, but I still have some. You know, you could use the promo code one year two zero. I already did it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got some more coming. Don't you worry. All right. What else do we got here? Uh, see, let's that's that's see. the S and P bud right there. I'm, I was just going to say getting, the S and P. I'm the getting real low on that guy. I got some new. I got some new ones showing up though, so it should be fine. Nice. And let's do one more. Let's do one more. How potato about... cheat code? The S and P is the potato cheat code. And just pick one randomly. Uh, I pick one randomly. The Cajun. The Cajun. All right. The Cajun. No. No. Was I supposed to keep talking? There you go. Yes. I didn't know I was supposed <laughs> to keep talking. Uh, cumin, coriander, Spanish paprika, kosher salt, black pepper, and guess what, Kyle? Additional <laughs> spices. <laughs> That's where be the sure magic to, is. Be sure to check out all the great seasonings. At the madcadianbbq.com and use the promo code one year two zero. That is one spelled out O N E Y E A R two zero at checkout for 20% off your entire order for the month of October. And make sure to check out the Mad Canadians social media pages to find out where the barbecue bus will be next. Yes. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. All right, Kyle. That was an early ad read. We're we're now good. We're now good. Oh, and now we have an Apollo sighting. Oh, okay. All okay. right. 
All right, let's let's go and cover the national games here. Uh, let's see, there's a lot of games you don't want to talk about, so let's <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about. Do you really want to talk about Houston Tulane? Is that a thing you want to do? Mm, nah. Yeah, I didn't think so. How about the Tar Heels, Jared? The Tar Heels and the Hokies. Yeah, um, this cost me a sloop pick. By the way, sloop picks went very poorly. <laughs> uh, I, I haven't even looked. <laughs> oh, you you probably shouldn't, but we, again, much like COVID, we kind of have to. Um, yeah, this game looked like the Tar Heels were going to run away with it. Um, then Virginia Tech fought back. Um, it, it ends up still being the Tar Heels football game. Uh, you got to give it up for the Hokies for not quitting. I, I think that, like I said, the, the Tar Heels really took it to the Hokies for a long time. Uh, Hokies kept fighting. Uh, didn't watch this one in great detail, if that's not obvious to anyone yet. Um, it was, was kind of third on my nooner list. But, yeah, it was, um, you know, it's one of those things... We're really trying to figure out at this point who teams are. And I'm just I'm not I'm not sure with North Carolina yet. They do appear to be pretty good. You know, they're they're the team that destroyed Virginia Tech. But they're also the team that let Virginia Tech back into the football game. So we're still trying to figure out who these teams are. And I think North Carolina is good. Um, I just don't think that they're all that great. Um, mm-hmm. all, all, by the way, first off, all the polls are dumb. They've always been dumb, but they're extra dumb this year. Yeah. And well, here, here's some, here's something, Jared. Everyone, everyone's overrated we, right now. Yeah, because so it's we, inflated we, because mm-hmm. the Big Ten and the Pac-12 are not being properly represented in the polls for obvious reasons at this moment. So, like. What you normally think of as like a number eight team, which is what North Carolina was going into this game, or a number 19 team, which is what Virginia Tech was getting. All of those numbers are inflated simply because there aren't a lot of active football teams to represent in the polls right now. Yep. All right, here, here's something um, we, we talked about before, before the season started about the different conferences and who we think – will come out on top or in the conference championship games and all that. And we talked about the Tar Heels briefly. Yeah. Looking at the schedule now, you know who their toughest game is for the rest of the year? Um, in the regular season, I know they don't play Clemson this year. Nope. They do not play Clemson. Uh, Their toughest game right now. I, I, so do they, yeah, you know, you just go ahead. Is Notre Dame. Yeah, and again, here's another, we'll talk a little bit, I'm not 100% sure who Notre Dame is either. So, so they play They play Florida State, NC State, Virginia, Duke, Wake Forest, Notre Dame, Miami, and Western Carolina. Ooh, Western Carolina, huh? The I think that that one that one was a reschedule for the no it wasn't. Hmm. Until I Every, they played it. Kyle, they're all reschedules. <laughs> At some <laughs> point, they're all reschedules. I, I can just see that meme there. I was like, wait, is that rescheduled? And then yes. they're all rescheduled. By the way, there there's a uh, Ohio. <laughs> it's all Ohio, and it always has been. T-shirt in the uh, seventy seventy one store. <laughs> Just want to go ahead and yeah, point that out. At the, looking at the rest of the schedule, North Carolina has a, I wouldn't say a great, but they have a decent shot at going undefeated. Depending on how they, well they do against Notre Dame and Miami. Until they get to the ACC championship game. Yes. Uh, and I, Miami looks like a, a good team, which is a weird thing to say, considering they kind of just got their butt kicked. But Miami's, I think, I still feel like Miami is better than North Carolina, despite what some might consider evidence to the contrary this weekend. But we'll talk a little bit more about Miami later. All right, Kyle. Missouri defeats LSU. Uh, life's tough when you don't have a Ohio State quarterback carrying your football team, huh? 
Yeah. In Missouri, Missouri is one of the bottom teams in the SEC too. And then you have Missouri coming coming on top here to beat LSU here. That's two games in a row for LSU. I think that's two um, games in a row. I don't think so. I think I thought LSU lost week one. Uh, you're right. Yeah. yeah, they did. Yes. And things don't get any better for LSU here where they play Florida, Auburn, Alabama and Texas A&M here. Yeah. So here we are. Here are LSU where they're playing uh, 10 games. And I can see them going Five and five uh, this year. Speaking of uh, teams going 500, which we talked about a couple of episodes ago. Michigan. Michigan possibly going four and four <laughs> this year. LSU, you're, you're defending champions. Well, you don't have to put that in five. You don't have to put that in quotes. They actually well, I didn't are. Go, the... Okay, I, I didn't mean to go in quotes. It was just my <laughs> hands going up. <laughs> they actually are the defending yes, champions. You're. You're defending champions going five and five, going 500 the year after. Yeah, I wonder when the last time that happened in college football. Hmm. That's a good question. But yeah, Missouri coming up on top of LSU. Uh, the <laughs> next game here for overtime of the Red River rivalry. Yeah. Got that right the first time. Uh, Oklahoma comes out on top 53 to 45. And that's not even high scoring game compared to some other ones we saw this weekend. And uh, it didn't even take pretty... an overtime. And then even taken overtime. Well, yeah. So Oklahoma here. It, yeah. It's a lot of lot of issues going on on the defensive side for Oklahoma. <laughs> you don't a say. Lot, you don't a lot. say. Uh, yeah, yards were plentiful and cheap this weekend mm-hmm. in, in college football. I think LSU gave up like 600 yards. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Bama Ole Miss later. I think both of those teams got about 600 yeah, I yards. Was, I was getting ready to write some sort of two-sentence thing about like if Oklahoma lost, about like, oh, when when was the last time that they beat an FBS school and this and that and – yeah, it would have been it would have been nice just to be like, oh, now Oklahoma's on a four game losing streak against FBS schools, uh, mm-hmm. but no, Oklahoma does win it, fifty three to forty five. Uh, they should have won it in regulation. Mm-hmm. Um, I won it. What was it like five minutes? I think like somewhere in between five and six minutes left in the football game, or even in they're, the third, they're up even in the third overtime too when they blocked that field goal and then. And then their kicker just shanks it. Yeah, but but they were up two touchdowns with only like five some minutes left in in regulation. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? I mean, I the get playing the, defense is, I, is what they're not doing. I get, I get it. You're in the Big Twelve, and no one plays defense in the Big Twelve. But try a little. Oh man, I don't think it's just the Big Twelve this year. No, no, the SEC doesn't play any defense this year either, which is weird to say out loud, but that's the reality we're living in right now. And by the way, don't give me this, well, no, it's not that it's not that the Big Twelve defenses are 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 bad. It's that we have really good offenses and really good quarterbacks. Bull shit. Don't even give me that. Speaking of Sam, <clears throat> Sam Ellinger is Kmart brand Trace McSorley. I've said it on Twitter many times. <laughs> what it is? Does he have like all the intangibles? Do you want to run through a brick wall for him? Does does he fight and claw? And do you just absolutely love watching him play? Yeah, like all of those things are true. But he's also not a very good quarterback. No. <laughs> like th- those are two separate thoughts. I love Trace McSorley. I love watching him play. He's entertaining. I I would love it if I got to play football with Trace McSorley. He also is a bad thrower of the football. Yes. And we even saw that, like, the last couple of throws that he threw in in overtime, too. Some bad throws. Yeah. Uh, 
Speaking of bad defenses, Florida, who looked oh like a God. really good contend- contender the first couple of games of, of the year, just shows that there are, again, same thing like with Oklahoma. There are some serious mm-hmm. defensive issues with this Florida team here as they go down to Texas A&M. And I will admit, I'm, I will admit, like when I was on here past – at least last episode, maybe the last two episodes, where I said Texas A&M is not a good football team. They're not though. Well, they're good enough to beat. They were good enough to beat Florida in this game, though. But I didn't even. I didn't even think they would have even done that. Fair, but what we're seeing is is that Florida. I mean, we all we knew Florida's defense was bad. That's not a surprise. We we knew Florida's defense was bad. Um, I don't think. I knew it was giving up 41 points to Texas A&M bad, but mm-hmm. apparently that's true. Apparently that that is what it is. Yeah. Um, Florida, I thought was going to be this year's Oklahoma, where they were going to go undefeated at, at least through the regular season, and that they and but everyone's going to go man, but their defense, man, but their defense, and then they'd get torched by whoever was number one in in the playoff. But no, it doesn't look like we're even going to get that out of Florida. Um, <clears throat> the ship seems to be writing itself right, yeah, writing itself in the SEC East. It does look like mm-hmm. Georgia's back on top, and that Florida is who Florida always was. Bought into that Florida hype train. And it's not without reason. I think that their offense is special. I think they have some really, real. I like Kyle Trask a lot. Yeah. Um, They have some amazing talent on that offense. The defense is just non-existent. By the way, Kyle, DBU check. Can we do a quick DBU check? All right, let's see. You know, LSU. I want to I I pull up some numbers here. Oh, we're I pulling up, pull up some. Wow, I have to scroll down on the SEC list just to find LSU here. I have to scroll all the way to the bottom here. We got to do a DBU check. Is that what we're doing right now? We are statistically yeah. here. Let us, let us look at LSU here. By game by game here. Let's see. They... Let up against uh, Mississippi State. Yep. As soon as my internet wants to go, uh, they let up. They let up. What was it? Over five hundred yards or something like that. I'm trying to pull up the actual game stats. It was here. a lot. It was a lot. We can we can maybe just say a lot if the stats don't want to pull up on your computer in a timely fashion. <laughs> a lot. They. And by they the way, up, before uh, anyone's just like, yeah. There you go. But Mississippi State's offense is just really, really good. They scored two points against Kentucky this weekend. Two. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so they let up over 600 yards passing against Mississippi State. And I'd once again like to point out Mississippi State scored yeah. two points this weekend against Kentucky. Two points. Vander, Vanderbilt yeah. passed Vanderbilt. Belt? Yes. The football team. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Passed for over 300 yards. Okay. And then Missouri, over 400 yards. They now, Jared, yeah. if I'm doing my math correctly, that is, sure. they, have, they have led up 1,500 yards in three games. Yeah, it's, and that's just through the air. DBU. DBU. By the way, just real quick, that's only through the air. Mm-hmm. That is only through the air. Uh, Florida, we don't necessarily, I mean, we can if we want to. It's your show too. But it's it's no better on the Florida side. Oh, I'm sure I'm sure it's not either. And for God's sakes, Kyle, because I don't think your brain can count that high, we don't need to look up how much Texas is, is giving up. Oh, gosh. Another team that likes to claim DBU. Of course, we all just laugh at Texas when Texas does it. Well, I'm, I'm actually surprised the passing isn't as bad Florida- uh, 400, 200, and the bar is 330. The so bar is under real. A thousand, it's under a thousand. The bar is real low when you're like, well, they only gave up 400 plus in this game. <laughs> That's a real low bar, Kyle. For a, yeah. for a team that likes to claim DBU. Mm-hmm. There's one DBU and it's right here in Columbus, Ohio. So who, who, who else is the other DBU team? 
maybe Texas. Mm. Texas, Ohio. LSU, and Florida are the ones that like to claim it outside of mm. Ohio State. Uh, Virginia Tech Does, also likes to claim it sometimes, and they've Does had Bama some. Like to? No, I think okay. they they're they're they primarily like to focus on running back you, which is mm. which is accurate. And I do want to note too, like when Alabama played in Missouri. They held they held Missouri to oh gosh like three hundred yards total, yeah. So, and, and Alabama also stifled Texas A and M as well. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Iowa State, Jared. Yeah. Iowa State still rocking. Mount Union West. Those guys are doing good. Um, I I lost another sloop pick on this one. I I. I Knew Iowa State was going to win. Um, I, I thought that the uh, the point spread was a bit high on that. I mm-hmm. was proven wrong. Um, Texas Tech had an opportunity at the end to uh, get a backdoor cover, not to win, but maybe to to save my sloop picks just a little bit. Um, but my sloop picks uh, yeah. died. They're dead. Yeah. So Iowa State right on top of the <laughs> – how about this, Jared? The top three teams – all tied right now within conference for the big 12. Yeah. Iowa state, it Oklahoma is, state. Um, as I say, it's not Texas. It's not Oklahoma. Yeah. It's not Baylor. It's not TCU. It is Iowa state, Oklahoma state, and your wildcats of Kansas state. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Hold on. Well, can I, well, one of those teams is going to lose next I need weekend. A, I need Iowa like, I need an Eddie Burback style yikes right now. <laughs> well, next weekend, Iowa State is taking on the Cowboys next weekend. Yeah. That will definitely be on the Snoop Picks. Maybe. No, it, it will be. It definitely yeah, will it will be. be. <laughs> Kyle will riot if I don't. <laughs> uh, another game here Georgia and Tennessee. Georgia let Tennessee hang around in that first half. And then the second half, they're like, you know what? Yeah. Let's, let's actually play. It, it really <laughs> even got into the late third quarter. Uh, mm-hmm. So again, we're still sort of trying to figure out who all of these teams are. Still not really sure who North Carolina is still not really sure who Notre Dame is. I do feel like I have a good hold on who Georgia is right now. Um, they're a team with a ton of talent, which we knew. We, 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 we've seen the recruiting rankings. We knew that already. But they're a team that does not execute well, that does not scheme well. Um, I think that they're underachieving with their talent. But they, do, but they have so much talent on their team that they treat a team like Tennessee, who's, you know, it's a good football team in, in the scheme of what I'm talking about right now. And I will say oh, hold, hold on, hold on. I need to finish this thought. But they basically treat Tennessee like Ohio State might treat a an Akron or a Buffalo, where it's just like, okay, maybe let them hang around a little bit, let them hang around a little bit. And then, oh, by the way, we're a lot deeper than you, and we're a lot more talented than you. So once we get like into the mid-late third quarter, we're just going to start pulling away mm-hmm. because we're just that much deeper when, when you can rotate guys in and your people are still fresh and your opponents only playing their top 30 players, they start to wear down the depth and everything takes over. And that's who Georgia is. They have so much talent. They, they can treat a team like Tennessee like that, where even if Georgia's not executing well or scheming all that well, uh, that they can still just sort of pull away at the end because yeah. their depth is and their talent is just that good. When I think, and I think their talent, most of that talent is on the defensive side. I mean, granted, who they've played, they played. I mean, Auburn's not a bad team. And uh, they played Tennessee. Eh. They t- played. <laughs> they played Tennessee and Arkansas as well, and they've held each of their teams under 300 yards total in every game so far. 280, 214. Uh, against Tennessee in 216 to Auburn defensively they're good I mean you can yeah. say you can you can talk about who they yeah. played on that but you know what look at some of these other teams yeah, that 
uh, that they've played this weekend. Like, look at Alabama and they played Ole Miss. Look at Notre Dame, they played Florida State and how many yards and points they've let up there. Georgia's defense is solid this year, and it's yeah, yeah. definitely something really to keep an eye out for, and especially this next next weekend with another future slip cast. So, Georgia, Georgia, and Alabama. Yeah. So basically, I think what Kyle's trying to say is that Georgia is who Georgia's always been. They're a team, or maybe a combination of what Kyle and I said. They're a team with an amazing defense who schematically uh, doesn't put things together on offense. Yes, correct. Yes. They have talent on the offensive side, but they never seem to put it together. Mm-hmm. But the defense yep. is is tremendous. That's who mm-hmm. Georgia is. And Tennessee is who Tennessee is, which is just a good team. That That's it. They're not a great team. They're just a good team. They're a middle of the pack. They're a middle of the pack power five team. That's who mm-hmm. Tennessee is. Yep. They're a team that can look really good against bad opponents, but when it comes time to stand up to one of the top tier football teams, they just don't have it. Mm-hmm. That that's that's who Tennessee is and has been uh since the Peyton Manning T Martin era of the nineties. Uh after you get past that, that's just who Tennessee is. They're a team that's never going to quite make the uh, the postseason. Is for, you know they'll, they're going to finish third or fourth in their division. That's that's just mm-hmm. who Tennessee is. Yep. Jeff Hasley, Halfley. <laughs> <laughs> Get more caffeine. We're by the way, in defense of Kyle, we are recording this way early he's got some travel things to deal with we were recording this really really early in the morning jeff halfley <laughs> there you go my goodness i apologize jeff halfley with a with a good win over pittsburgh uh yeah. this weekend here a really good win i mean considering it's it's boston college you know mm-hmm. he has that team trending in the right direction he gets an do, overtime I mean, win against pittsburgh i'd like to point out that pittsburgh's kicking issues continue um <laughs> they they did win oh, this that was a shank they did win this game because the pittsburgh kicker missed the extra point in a game by the way that the pittsburgh kicker also nailed like a 58 yarder something, something crazy like, that. like yeah, that it was a long kick yeah he, the Pittsburgh kicker is both tremendous and terrible. He has made some amazing kicks this year. I don't know why I'm so intimately familiar with the kicking issues with the Pittsburgh Panthers right now. <laughs> but college football, the kicker one... is simultaneously amazing and terrible at the there, same time. There's only one kicker that everybody knows the name to. Uh, Dicker. Dicker the kicker. Dicker. <laughs> uh uh, cause you know, you just guess oh, more, more on the kicker, more on the kicker here in a couple of games here. <laughs> but yeah, no, great, great victory. I'm, I'm definitely keeping my eye on Boston college just because Jeff halfway. I like to yeah. see him do well. Yeah. Yeah. And I like to see a lot of the Ohio assist, uh, former Ohio state assistants. I have a really binary relationship with, I either want to see them fail or achieve. <laughs> So, <laughs> and there's not a lot in between. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. There's yeah. there's a good separation here. I want anybody who's former house state. I have no idea where you're going with this. That is non Big Twelve to do uh, well. I don't have anything against Chris Ash. I really don't. I like Chris Ash. Yeah. And I and I and I am I guess sad. It was Chris Ash. That is one I forgot. Yeah, yeah. And I am sad to see him struggling so hard in Austin mm-hmm. right now. Um, but, now, they, <laughs> but, <laughs> but <laughs> is, but can we jump back to Texas real quick? Is Herman done? Is this, is this it for Herman? I mean, how many chances are you going to give him here? It looked like, it looked well, like things can, were in the upright. We're going the right direction. The first couple of years, like, okay, he's going yeah. the right direction, but then it just, it just went up. And then it's just, if, if, let me say this about Tom Herman. If, 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 if this is his last year at Texas, he will have left Texas better than when he found it. Yes. And that's saying something. Mm -hmm. Now, let me also say this about Tom Herman. 
how attractive is the Texas job right now? So you can be like, okay, get rid of Tom Herman. We're done with Tom Herman. Who are you getting to replace him? Because I think like the big hot name in coaching right now is probably Matt Campbell at Iowa State. There were a mm-hmm. lot of people, and I get it, I disagree with it, but I get it, who were, who were wanting Ohio State to at least interview with Matt Campbell instead of just handing the job to Ryan Day. I get it. He's an Ohio guy. He's a Mount Union guy. I get it. I disagree. <laughs> Ryan Day is the guy. He was always the guy. He always should have been the guy. But there's a lot of people who are like, I want an Ohio guy. And maybe Ryan mm-hmm. Day isn't an Ohio guy. But as we've seen with Michigan, trying to limit your your coaching pool to mm-hmm. insert state here guy has not always worked out well. Ever since ever since Tom Herman started, at a, at a double check here, ever since Tom Her- Herman started the Texas job, other than one year, which is I think 2017 recruiting class, he's been in the top ten recruiting. So it's not it's not it's not a it's not a recruiting issue here at this point. And when you, when you're going the past, when you go in the past couple of years, like last year, 2020, they were ranked eighth and then third. And then I think third again, yep. Third again. And then fifth, it's not a recruiting issue at this point. When you got the, you you got that kind of talent in your organization, it's got to come down to scheming. It's got to come down to your coaching staff then. Yeah. And I, it, more than that, I think it comes down to culture. I, I think that COVID and all of the disruptions we've seen, I think we're really going to learn a lot about which football programs have a good internal culture and which ones don't. Mm-hmm. And you have to sort of look at Oklahoma and LSU and ask what's going on with those cultures. Yeah. Uh, and we'll, we'll see with Ohio state. All right, Kyle, let's, let's move forward. All right. Uh, interesting one here. Auburn, um, beat to Arkansas on a, with like eight seconds left a field goal to, to take the lead. They were down 27, 28 and kick a field goal to ultimately win 30 to 28, but that's but. not the story here, <laughs> but that, that is not the but. story here. <laughs> uh, that play where yeah. the Auburn quarterback fumbled the snap. Yes. Spiked it. Didn't it normally when you normally when yeah. you spike it, you spike Kyle, it in front of you. Go Kyle with the demo. Doing a but demo. He, but instead of me throwing it in front of you, he turns around here and throws it this way behind you. Yeah. I don't now I I like to consider myself I know rules pretty sure. well in football yeah. for the most part. Yeah. You throw the ball behind you i don't care if you <laughs> spike it yeah or if you throw it to, on the other end of the end zone uh-huh that's a backward pass uh-huh at ball is live yeah kyle you know your rules that's a fumble <laughs> yeah um, arkansas arkansas got got the wrong end of the call there that should have been arkansas game right there i agree and i i would like to talk more about this but I think Kyle nailed it, and all I can do is agree with him. Uh, right. Auburn, Moving on. <laughs> Auburn, Auburn got out of that with nothing more than an intentional grounding call. Um, and how, how was that even intentional? The running back was behind him. He actually threw it to his running back behind him. That wasn't even intentional. I, uh, once again, Kyle makes all the good SEC points. SEC refs, man. <laughs> and, then, and then, by the way, they went under the replay booth. Oh, God. It's not like they didn't. I would I would almost forgive them if the, all of that happened and it was a bit weird and chaotic. And then Auburn ran the kit. No, they went under the replay booth. They. Oh, speaking of replay booths here, this next game, <laughs> Kyle, your transition game. You're really leaning on the speaking of. You're you're leaning on it hard, and I'm gonna need you to do a little bit better. <laughs> Clemson in Miami game. Yeah, Clemson Miami. Now, yeah. Clemson was going to win the game. I, I There was no question about that. They pulled away to, to the end there. By the way, you skipped Kansas State and TCU, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> Kansas State wins, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 okay, Clemson wins, and it was a, it was a 
rain. It was a rainy game. Okay. Clemson was a better team. Yes. We all yep. knew that. I, I want to take this time and talk about no idea where you're going with this. I'm excited about probably the only player that you like from this team. Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that. I, I do. I, I like Trevor Lawrence. I lost, I lost a lot of, I mean, I, I did too. I, I did too. I lost a lot of respect out of Trevor Lawrence. And it seems to be a reoccurring thing for the past couple of games now where it might, it might have started with Ohio State. And, you know, you can call, you can call me out like, oh, oh, Kyle's still a little sore about losing to Clemson last year. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. but you know what? Maybe. It's still valid to the point of this game where he gets hit hard yeah. in the gut. That 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 did look like it hurt. Yeah, probably got the wind knocked out of him. He was laying down. Hmm. Kind of reminds me of another play here. He gets not. Yeah. He gets he gets hit hard. The entire training staff surrounded him. Like mm-hmm. there was there was a there was a there, Trevor there was a Lawrence. Concern. Trevor there was a Trevor concern. Lawrence goes down and like thirty was, people ran onto the field to check on him. And yeah, so he got he threw the ball, got hit hard. They stopped the play to make sure he was okay. It wasn't like for a good minute, two minutes until they like, oh, hey, we're going to look under the, we're going to review that play. And it's like, review what? He got hit in the gut. The player, okay, so I'm just going to devil's advocate this real quick. Playing playing devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. You still can't use your helmet as a spear by lowering your head and initiating contact okay. with the crown okay, of the that's, helmet. That's so true. I did he get anywhere near Trevor Lawrence's head? No. No. Can you still get a targeting call? And that is because he didn't even lower his head this time. Okay, I'm just just want to point out. <laughs> oh, he got. I just cause I saw a lot on Twitter. He got nowhere near. He wasn't anywhere near the head. He wasn't anywhere near the head. I, I get that. You can still get a targeting call for essentially a helmet a top of the helmet initiation of contact and mm-hmm. that's to protect the defender not the not not the person being hit yeah. that is to protect because we've seen players get so, paralyzed I mean, by I mean, initiating I could, contact up i completely here. i completely agree with you and i completely understand but if that's the case call it always not just yeah. not just when not just when yeah. the quarterback of of the currently the ranked the best team in the country and you're trying to protect their Once again, player there. They actually are and you don't need to put that well, in. <laughs> just messing with you. Call it both ways because yeah. there was a number of times when King got hit, crown on the helmet yeah. to his helmet as well. No call, no review or anything like that. Call it both ways. Yeah. Don't just do it where... The quarterback goes down and gets hurt. Oh, and by the way, he's on the sideline because he has to sit out one play. He's over there cheering. He's like waving his arms when when they call the Miami player to um, that he's uh, disqualified, and he's over there cheering. And I'm like, "What the hell, man?" None of that bothered what me. What the hell? None of that bothered me except the the celebration of the player getting ejected because it, whether true or not, it does make it look intentional. It does make it look like mm-hmm. he's laying on the ground. Again, I'm not saying this is true. I have no idea. But it does put out the perception that he was just sort of laying on the ground. I'm not saying it didn't hurt, but that maybe he mm-hmm. milked it a little bit, just being like, I'm going to lay, I'm gonna lay so, here for a little bit. Maybe we can get a targeting call. So, so in, the fir- in the first one, too. So the first one was also, I think, they called it right, where the Miami player... Uh, did hit Lawrence as he was sliding. So Lawrence was sliding and then the other Miami player came in to, to tackle and just hit him while he was sliding. This is a, it, t- it puts defenders in such a tough situation when you have a very mobile quarterback who's able to run when a couple of plays before that Lawrence was running and going right at him at a defender. Yeah. To, um, to gain more yardage. Here you go a couple of plays later, instead of him going right at a player, he slides then. It makes the, it so hard for a defender to know, do I need to let up or do I need to tackle so he doesn't get that extra 
couple yards or even break a tackle that's, um, from there. It it puts those defenses yeah. in such a tough situation there. It it does. It, that's a tough situation for the defenders. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm not because yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to blame the Miami player for trying to tackle. It, it was the right call, but I can't blame Miami for trying to tackle Lawrence there based on what he did a couple of plays before that. Yeah. And I think that there are, and I think Lawrence is borderline on this. There are some quarterbacks whose slides are pretty immediate. Mm -hmm. Some quarterbacks will take a nice long baseball slide. Others will basically kind of just jump, (laughs) just sort of like jump like this and be like, I slid. Um, and Lawrence isn't quite like that, but it, it is, it is bad. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, 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 um, I, I don't know. It, I, I like, I still like Trevor Lawrence and, and I, I'm not disagreeing with anything you said, but I, I do think he's an incredibly special quarterback and yeah. And I'm yeah. not taking that, I'm not taking that away from him. It's just, it's, I think what really and by the way, I really stick to my, what's going to really yeah. stick to my mind is, is him celebrating BS, was that BS targeting call. Cause I mean, he hit, that's not, he led with his, he led with his helmet and hit him in the Trevor gut. Lawrence is not responsible for the targeting rules being what the targeting rules are, but it's his reaction yes. after that. That's yeah. what's going to stick in my mind with yes. Trevor Lawrence for a very long time. And again, time. whether true or not, it does create the perception that he was, mm-hmm out there diving like a soccer player, yeah. which is not a thing that is, by the way, and just if we're going to talk about diving real quick, can we extend the, if a player's injured more than one play? It should be that entire drive done the entire drive. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure what the correct answer is, but I just, so many players flopping to, slow down no huddle mm-hmm. offenses it should, it should be the drive potentially the drive um that that makes sense or just just more than one play even if it's like five plays just but then but then you but then at that point you're the the referees have to try to keep track of like okay how many plays has it been and can you go into that make it easy drive and that's then a, that's a valid th- point that might be asking that, a that's bit just much that's just too much for the referees Especially the side I, reps. I you that's a valid point. That's a very valid point, Kyle. All right. Um we're running we talk along a, here. Should we talk a little bit about the actual Clemson game? Um uh, he King King was great and he did everything he could. <laughs> um his offensive line simply wasn't up to the task of blocking no. Clemson's defensive line. Mm-hmm. Um this game played out like I thought it would play out. Um Miami's defense has got some good players on it. King is a special quarterback. I think what the, I think what, there's I, just an insane talent difference here. Oh no, absolutely. And I think the player who really stood out to me, I mean, Trevor Lawrence had a good game. He did, but the player who really stood out to me in that game was ETN. Yeah. ETN is a very, very special guy. I have no idea why he came back. I have no idea either. That is it is that was a steal. For him to come back and yeah. seeing what he can do and his acceleration is his acceleration insane. his vision his balance etn is him going zero to 60 just being able to just get up to full speed in like a matter of like five it seems like five yards is ridiculous yeah i'm just glad ohio state's not playing them anytime soon <laughs> <laughs> Man, right, um, getting that number one spot is going to be huge this year. Yeah. Absolutely enormous getting that number one spot. Deja vu. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, quickly, the last couple of games here. Um, can, I don't even know why you want to bring this up. Kentucky and Mississippi State. Well, I want to point out that I, 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 the reason I put it on here was just to point out what I already pointed out, okay. which the people were trying to point out that, well, Mississippi State has a really good offense now. And then they score two points against Kentucky. So that whole, well, Mississippi State's actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I want to talk about the middle one here. So uh, Notre Dame beats 
Florida State, 42 to 26. I thought this was definitely going to be a closer game. Uh, did... Nope, they didn't cover. No. I don't know why you thought oh, it no, would no, be. Oh, a... no, no, no. Florida State did cover. Yeah. That was a point for the mad Canadian and myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not happy about any of it. Um, yeah, what the... I got two games. I got two games this year, um, this week. Hold on, let's, let's do the last one, then we'll go into this real quick. Uh, yep. I, I definitely thought it was a close, going to be a closer game, but handily still by Notre Dame. Uh, I'm honestly surprised it's. A, I mean, obviously considering I picked yeah. Notre Dame, but yeah. I, I'm uh, I'm surprised it was what it. Yeah, what it was. Yeah, Alabama and Ole Miss. I've this lost respect good... for. I've lost respect for Notre Dame. Is just <laughs> that's that's the only thing I want to throw out there. I've it, again. Oh, we're trying to figure out who all these teams are. Just gonna. That seems Move like, that Notre seems, Dame down a notch. That, that, seem, that seems like a yearly tweet you should say every year. Yeah, <laughs> I should just schedule that tweet. All right, uh, Alabama and Ole Miss. This is a good old Big 12 shootout here where Alabama wins 63 <laughs> to 48. Yeah. 101 point, or excuse me, 111 points. Uh, and by the way, there was not an overtime here. <laughs> yeah, no overtimes needed for this game. Yeah, each My team. My goodness. Each team puts up. 600 plus, I think near 700 yards by each team. Um, Alabama just killed him on the ground. Mac Jones oh, they, is, they both, they both did. Mac Jones is a serviceable quarterback, but he's nothing special. Alabama did what they did on the ground. Mm-hmm. And Alabama has also done a great job designing an offense around Mac Jones. If you want to look at, if you want to look statistically wise, it's, relatively close like uh Ole Miss yeah. had about 270 rushing so it wasn't like that they couldn't run against Alabama they Which, did 270 yeah. yards against Alabama is is a feat of money against itself right there and then they passed for almost 400 as well I yeah it, my biggest surprise outside of Alabama giving up 48 points which is a, a pretty big surprise my biggest surprise is not that Ole Miss was able to throw the ball in Alabama because you just kind of give that to Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin puts together really good offenses. What's surprising here is what Ole Miss was able to do against Alabama on the ground. Yes. That was shocking to me because I really don't they, feel like Ole Miss has that type of talent on the offensive line yeah, that they, they had, should be able to do that. They had almost five yards of carry yeah. against Alabama. So are we are we going to slot down? I mean, maybe not. I mean, to me, not yet. Not to, yet. To me, I've always said that it's like one A, one B, Ohio State and Clemson, mm-hmm. and then Bama is right there, all by themselves at number two, and sure. then there's like thirty teams at number four. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to find out more about this Alabama team when they take on Georgia next week. So. It'll be interesting. We'll yeah. we'll find something out. Yeah. All right. Uh, quickly here, looking at our pick'em games. Uh, Mad Canadian runs away with it last weekend. He gets five picks right. Yeah. He gets five picks, and Tanner and Sean have four. While Cooper, myself, Suncard, and Chad get three, and everybody else with two picks. Yeah. Um, including our guest picker Jason. Um. He uh, he struggled right along with me, and Kyle saved the slip cast a few dollars uh, by edging him out <laughs> by a game. So, so right, no one so, no one's got a t shirt from us yet. So the the standings right now, if we do top five here, Mad Canadian solely in the lead with fourteen, Tanner with thirteen, Jay with twelve, Duncan and myself with eleven. We don't need to talk about. And Jared with the nine. I said we don't <laughs> need to talk about it. Ah! All right. All right. That's it. That's it. Oh, we got a couple of Sloopcasts real quick. Ask Sloopcast questions. We are way over here. Uh, quickly, we got two questions. Brawley here says, choose any three positions. For each position, give us the most important measurable. Oh, my God. We, oh, that's this is... what... Um... Pass. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, That's, let me go We're way um, too far over for that big all, of a question. All, all the positions should be the, should be toughness, accountability, and fight. Kyle saves it. 
<laughs> Kyle, All right. we need to record really early in the morning more often because you are on your shit today. Um, and the Mad Canadian asks if Ryan Day called you pregame and asked what scheme they should run, what is your answer? Uh, do, do what you want to do, Mr. Day. I... <laughs> I bow to you. You are the offensive master. Why on earth are you calling me right now? Please follow your instincts and continue to do you because you're Ryan Day. Uh, if I were to say anything to Coach Day, it would be don't let up on the gas. If I got to talk to Coach Day, I'd be like, hey, you want a guest on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want a beer? <laughs> you want a local beer? Come on. Hey, Ryan Day, come on the podcast. We've never had a guest before we by policy don't really do guest but for you <laughs> but, but. <laughs> for you we'd make an exception all right that's all that's all i got here jared all right uh brawley we can do we can come back to your that that's a great like mm-hmm. uh We're that's just a great way over in time right that's now. a great question i feel like we could do an entire episode on that that's like it's a great wasteland topic if you could like copy and paste that and put it in your pocket mm-hmm. um and, and ask that again on a later day i would love to do that um but that's that's a huge question mm-hmm. we could we could do an entire roster on that question uh we just don't have that kind of time right now <laughs> we don't have time let me spend 10 minutes talking about how we don't have time <laughs> all right kyle anything in kyle's corner uh, other than I mentioned before that the crew will not, well, did not play on Sunday because of, con- because of, uh, health COVID issues concerns. and all that. So uh, other than that, no, just eager for Ohio State to start. We are inching closer. Inching closer, getting there, getting there, getting Next there. week. So in a week's time, we'll be actually doing a legit know your enemy. That'll be fun. But Kyle, yes. who's our, who's our enemy right now? Our enemy is Kevin Warren. Yeah. Oh, Kevin Warren. All right, Kyle. That's it for Kyle's Corner? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. All right. Tonight's ending music will be by a Columbus-based band called Why Omen. That is Y, like the question, W-H-Y space Omen, O-M-E-N. But in in case uh, you want to you want to check that out in any more detail, you can check the show notes uh, where you can find a link probably to their Bandcamp page is normally where I link that to. And then uh, you can find out the name of the song and I typically will link um, a YouTube link to a uh, to, to that song. Uh, that was a really tough way of saying that. But yeah, you can check all that out. Uh, but with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters once again, this is Y Omen. What's up, YouTube? My dog's being a dog. Mm. My dog <laughs> is also being a dog. She's been there the in. Oh, it popped back up. The entire episode. She's just been passed uh, good old, out. Good old LG. Yeah. And then Apollo's just been running around doing <laughs> stuff because he's a puppy and that's what he does. Mm hmm. But 7071 store. Yes. I'm going to point that out. Kyle's got the Sloopcast merch on. We didn't do our normal spiel because we were running. We started that show and I'm like, man, we're going to come in way under time. And then whenever that happens, I just start talking more. Like my brain just naturally (laughs) is like, Phil, talk more. You can talk more. And then the balloon gets way too big. All right. Um, is it time to rejoin our audio listeners? So let's let's go ahead and do that. I'd once again like to thank the Mad Canadian for sponsoring today's episode. Um, I grabbed one at random, uh, but it was the Cajun again. We already talked about the Cajun. Uh, let's see. This is the Sonoran Heat. This, the Smoked, the S&P Bud. Uh, those are your do-it-allers. Uh, let's see. The Sonoran Heat. Oh, boy. We got... Himalayan pink salt. We have chili powder. We have cumin. Uh, we have garlic, black pepper, mm. onion, paprika, and guess what, Kyle? Additional spices. Additional spices. And don't, and don't don't and don't let the word heat fool you, though. Like my it's, wife, it's, she does. My wife doesn't like spicy food. Yeah, but she puts it on her salmon. Very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. It has it has just a little kick to it. 
Yeah, it's it's. I mean, I just read the ingredients to you. I think the paprika, the chili mm-hmm. powder, the chili powder. Yep, chili powder. Yeah, but it's it's not it's not a ton. <clears throat> wow, it's not a ton of heat. Um, it's really good um, for people who don't like heat. It's it's pretty uh, middle of the road in that but respect. If you, but if you want heat, the Four Horsemen, or the Discord, or the Discord. Uh, the the Four Horsemen and the Discord are four pepper blends. That is very spicy. Um, if you are wondering, Hey, what's the difference? The discord has, I think kind of a maple base to it, I think is, is what that's based in. And the, uh, four horsemen has more of a salty base. So both very spicy. The discord has a sweet base and the four horsemen has a, has a salty base. But they're both a four pepper blend with a, like I said, a really really spicy. The Sonoran heat's just a little bit of a kick, so you can just sort of maybe figure out where your heat level is at on that. And uh, there's also just a bunch of other great stuff. You got the Mad Hatter. Uh, that's a. This is not again. This is kind of spicy, but not super spicy. Focus camera. Focus. It's not going to focus. Um, it. This does have red pepper in it. Uh, but it also has uh, citrus in it, I believe lime. Yeah, it's a uh, chili lime, and it's salt. So it's a it's a basically a salty chili lime seasoning, and I I really really like that one too. Um, it's great on chicken tenders or just chicken in general, but I, I tend to put it on my chicken tenders. Yes, and uh, I think uh, I think that's it. Uh, check out the Mad Canadian social media pages to find out where that barbecue bus is gonna be, and. You can use the promo code one year O N E year twenty the entire month of October to get twenty percent off your entire order. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. <laughs>